Hello, witches and wizards, and welcome one more time to Medicina Esiterum. Today, I wanted to do a little bit of a recap of what's been going on the past months that I haven't been posting any videos, what processes I have been going through, um, what knowledge I have inco incorporated um, since I've been reading some books that I want to share with you that have inspired a new process of evolution, a new process in my craft. Um, it also, as you can see, a little bit of a different setup, so a little bit of a difference in my altar space and the space where I work. So I wanted to share that, and I also want to share a little bit of a spring cleanse, uh, spring, spring summer perk up of the home with you. So stay tuned and don't forget to like this video. See you there! Well, first things first, like I was telling you, I haven't been posting in uh, quite a few months. Um, the winter has been long. Uh, also, I had my family from Argentina over in Northern Ireland. Uh, so it's been like a chaotic time. We've been visiting places, um, trying to enjoy the winter as much as we could. Uh, and after that, it was all the aftermath, getting T uh, tidy it up. In fact, this space that is now my workspace and my altar space was completely taken down to uh, host my parents in this room. So uh, I took a little bit of a time to rebuild the entire place. Um, I took some time to decide what I wanted to have this time, what I wanted to put up that best aligned with my practice nowadays. And if I have to sum up my practice at the moment, uh, it's been kind of a lot of self-care. Self-care and thinking of myself first and maybe not exposing my work so much and maybe not working to post content. Uh, I've been very quiet in my Instagram too. Uh, if you notice that, I am sorry, and I almost am not sorry because I know that the ebb and flow of the year is about um, cycles. Cycles when we go inwards and we take care of ourselves and other cycles when we come out with something new uh, and recreate ourselves. So um, if you have been following me and you've seen that I haven't been posting much, it's because I've been doing exactly that. I've been trying to focus on really what is moving me at the moment from the witch, the witchcraft practice, from the spiritual practice, from the yoga practice. And I've also been working out and taking care of my eating habits, trying to align with this new, more airy and lighter time of the spring and the summer. And the winter, we eat more, we tidy less, and we sort of, the house sort of becomes like this bear cave to hibernate. So, um, so with the changing of the season slowly now, the weather getting slightly better in Northern Ireland, um, I've been recreating this space, my altar space. I've used this month too to re-engage with reading. I haven't properly read an, a book from start to finish in a while, so I thought that I wanted to change that. And one of the 
days that we were out in the winter, I noticed that in one of the shopping malls that I frequently go to, a new bookshop has opened. Uh, and so I bought a book. <laughs> I bought a book and this first book that I bought uh, was a very recommended one uh, from me to you, which is called The Alchemist and it's by Paulo Coelho. Uh, if you don't know him, he is a Brazilian writer uh, who has become really famous for this book. This is a very short book, but it's highly recommended. Uh, it's an inspired alchemical transformation and journey in a literal sense but also in a spiritual sense. So that book was just so engaging and so easy to read that it just inspired me to keep on reading. So I read it in like five days. I just smoked it up really because it was fantastic and, and it was so well written and it's so easy to read and the adventure is so engaging uh, that I completely finished that and I said yes this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted a book that will put me back into reading from start to finish and I can say I read this book and not only that but I usually as you can see I uh, mark up my books and I mark up the things that I think at the moment that touch me the most and that uh, I think are going to give me a teaching, not even expecting it to give me a teaching, but something that caughts, caughts my attention, I highlight it. And then what I do when I finish reading the book is in my journal, I write down these phrases and I explain why I highlighted them or what I think they mean for me at this moment. So after I finished, uh, finished The Alchemist, I started reading another Paulo Coelho book because I thought that he is such a great writer. Like, is that kind of writer that even when you're not reading the book, you put down the book and you go to do something else and whatever you do in that day reminds you of the book. Like the story stays with you and it feels like it's part of your own life. So I was really inspired. So the second book I, re I read, um, has been The Witch of Portobello. Now this book is completely different from The Alchemist. It's, it's like a documentary of a real event in life that is written like the um, opinions and sort of like the testimonies of the people who knew this woman uh, during her life. So um, it's a different type of writing. It's not it's not per se a journey or an adventure, but it's more a series of events uh, and how this woman ends up being the witch of Portobello. Um, it's a different tone too. It's a book um, I wouldn't recommend like I recommend The Alchemist, but still uh, it's worth reading. And if you are like if you like Paolo Coelho, then it's a good thing to read it because it's a different style. It, it has a beautiful ending and it's very instructive too. I think what I like the most about this book is that it actually teaches you things uh, about um, spiritual teachings passing, being passed on from teacher to disciple. Uh, it teaches you a lot about spirituality um, and how spirituality can move and change people and how it can be misunderstood too. So it's a, it's an interesting book in, in content. So again, I highlighted all the things that I thought were interested, interesting and afterwards I downloaded that into my uh, journal, extracting ideas and sort of the stealing the ideas, right? In an alchemical concept, the stealing the ideas is passing these ideas through this process where they go into the abstract like you take the literal words you elevate them to thoughts and then you sort of condense them in your daily life and how they can be useful for you and then the third book i read and this is the one that shocked me the most or or that sort of propelled this moment in my practice uh, and it's a book called A Deed Without a Name. Uh, I got it, I got um, told about it 
from another YouTuber that I follow, uh, Solitude of Alana. She is a Catalonian uh, folkloric witch uh, and she recommended it and I thought yes I'm gonna read it because I like the what it seems to be about. This book uh, was written by Lee Morgan and it says it talks about traditional witchcraft and it talks about the experiences of witches in the past or women that were um, drowned or um, judged by uh, for being witches and what are their testimonies and how much their testimonies hold up um, witchcraft as part of their culture what what things were there before because if we think about it the witch trials have been with christianity right when christianity uh, appeared in and and started sort of settling into the different cultures that's when witchcraft was deemed to be demonic or evil or dangerous for that town or society or culture but the truth is that the practices that these women uh, were uh, accounted of saying that they were practicing uh, are practices that really date along back from pagan backgrounds and farther back. Um, it talks about things like fairy doctors in Ireland, um, werewolves, believe it or not. Uh, it talks about vampires and the idea of energy sucker, uh, energy sucking entities. Uh, and it, then it talks about all the kinds of creatures. It talks about the witch's familiar, it talks about the fetch mate, it, to it talks about um, the double, the, the, the ethereal double. So it's a lot of concepts that if you are getting into witchcraft, I'll say it like this. So if you're getting into the language of witchcraft specifically and the folk folklore of witchcraft, but you already have a spiritual background is the perfect book for you. Now, if you're new to everything, to spirituality, and you're new to witchcraft, and you're new to the other planes of existence, it might be a bit overwhelming. It might, it might be a bit crazy. It's a book that might be seen as a bit crazy. But with what I've been practicing, what I was looking for is a book with a good background uh, that taught me about the concepts uh, of the lingo of witchcraft, which are these that I've been mentioning, the double, uh, the witch's ointment, the um, flying to the sabbat or sabbat. Um, so these concepts were things that I wanted to read about. And what is really, really fantastic and interesting about this book is that it ties up all these witchcraft uh, practices and, co uh, and concepts like ecstasy and, um, I don't know, like other states of consciousness. It ties it all up with both the empirical experience as a witchcraft practitioner and the experience of other modern and ancient practitioners and it ties it up with a little bit of like history and like a very grounded and down-to-earth knowledge which these are folkloric practices this is our, these are culture practices so i think it brings to the aseptic it brings a lot of sense um, even if you don't believe in magic, even if you don't believe in the practices of magic, you certainly can believe in cultural practices and practices that are passed on from generation to generation and that work for people in a context. And I think something that the book really leaves with you is the importance of the context how important it is that, for example, if you were a kid and you had contact with any sort of folkloric, magical background, 
culture, like for example, I don't know, uh, it could be Spain, it could be Southern Spain, it could be Catalonian, like the, the person that I follow, could be um, more French or German, Germanic, maybe Nordic um, traditions and culture. So if you can remember your grandparents or your great grandparents telling you anything about about the fairy world or about uh, creatures that grant wishes or anything like that. It makes you value those moments and recognize what is the culture that you were brought upon. So you can trace back in your tree, in your family tree, and see what are the pagan beliefs and practices that underlie um, your upbringing <laughs> and your family and your bloodline. So maybe if you're interested in practicing witchcraft and you're interested in finding your fetch mate or finding your familiar or finding a way to connect with the spirits of your territory, then maybe remembering those things and seeing where you come from and seeing where your bloodline is can help you find these contacts because you will know what type of entity, what type of creature, what type of spirit to contact and how. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a book that has like blown my mind uh, for many many reasons. The other reason is the definition it gives for witch, for the witch, for witchcraft. What is the witchcraft craft? Um, what is the witchcraft craft? <laughs> what is the witchcraft practice? What what is witchcraft? And what is a witch? What determines a witch? Well. The book goes into much explanation. Um, there are people who are born witches and there are people who become witches taught by other witches. So I will say that this book just blew my mind in many senses and it's a book I highly recommend. Again, if you're familiar with spirituality and you're familiar with ethereal planes and entities in other astral plane and, and etc. If you're familiar with dream work and etc. But you're not very... you're not super knowledgeable into what these concepts are. Um, or the concepts in witchcraft are, then it's highly recommended. Like, it's going to put you in the map, in the right spot. Noisy. If there was noise there, it's because I was recording with the window open. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend this book. And I think uh, it made me think about my own practice. And it made me think whether I'm a born witch or whether I'm a calling witch or whether what are the experiences that I have that I can sort of define myself in my practice and whether I want or not to define myself as a witch and as a witchcraft practitioner. So I think a little bit of the path to witchcraft, to being a witch, is a little bit of a death and a rebirth in a new experience in a new level of consciousness and awareness. Um, it's opening a door that you really have to choose whether you want to open it or not because it's opening a door for you, your being, for your being to be a channel between the world of the living and between the world of the dead uh, and everything in between because in here when we talk about the world of the dead, it's the dead, but it's also all the entities that don't ha that haven't been born in the earth, that, that don't have a corpor corporeal body. So it's a door to open yourself to be the vessel, to be the place of the experiment. It's really to be contacted and to be, yeah, a channel for these entities that are not seen to be seen and to be heard or to send messages. Um, and something that stayed with me from the book is that the witch works for and with the dead. So this is the reason why the witch and the concept witch has always been sort of shunned from society. Um, the fact that she works for this side, but also for the other side. So, um, he, the author, gives the, the concept of out of the hedge or beyond the hedge. 
this hatch is this limit um, between our culture and the, the world of the dead and the consciousness and the other side, which is also represented by our conscious life and our subconscious and unconscious mind. So, as I said before, it's choosing witchcraft and choosing a, experiencing the reality as a witch is opening this door to not just live in your conscious mind your whole life, but also giving way in different practices and in different ways, giving way to the subconscious mind to manifest. And there are different methods to do this. So it's actively seeking to make the subconscious speak, to make the unconscious, to the dark side of the mind, the back of the head, let it out and see what you learn from it or see what experience uh, you have with it. So it's a decision to make and I'm at this point, I am sort of uh, evaluating how much I've already have opened this door, how much I'm willing to explore this more. So I'm in a moment in my practice where everything has sort of transformed and it's reborn into, well, it's not yet born. I think I'm cooking it. I think I'm like in the gestation period of this new practice that I still have to decide what shape it's gonna take what name is gonna take and I will be very excited to share that with you when I know it but at this moment I just wanted to give this update of what's going on this is what's going on I'm, I'm deciding what to continue and how to transform and how to rebirth my practice so alongside all this project what's been going on is that I have been sort of renovating my house, uh, not refurbishing or anything like that, although there's been a little bit of that too, uh, but mostly sort of um, bringing it back to life, like bringing everything back to life from the stillness and the inertia of the winter. So now there's a lot of time from me uh, that I use to tidy up, to keep the house updated, up to date, and alive so i have to be cleaning here and i have to be changing this the position of this and i have to be bringing new things so it's like a i think it's the same way that my internal process is going it's in a gestation progress um becoming it's becoming and i think there's a lot of it's very dynamic and the same is happening in my house so i wanted to share a little bit with you of what you can do if you want to do this spring summer renovation and sort of rehash your home for the change of the mood into the light part of the year i realize in this time that i am not very keen uh with making videos in the light part of the year I, I i seem to draw my power from sawing on from october in the in the autumn and that's where all my creativity seems to uh be poured into these videos and i said why why am i like that why not enjoying actually the all the energy and the power that is in this time but um what i understand is that i am fueled by the heat and the sun so at this time, I'm just like a lizard in a rock like that, absorbing as much sun as I can. Um, so I tend to take this time a lot for myself, for friends and for my partner and my family to go out, enjoy the sun and nothing more. So I usually what I do is I make outside videos and traveling videos in the summer. Uh, but I decided that my practice my spiritual practice can also um, take a shape and, and be shared in the summer. So this is a little bit of my update and let's now go to the process of the spring, summer cleansing and rehashing. Let's go there. I realized that this video is already over 20 minutes long. So I've decided to leave the spring cleansing and the activities 
of spring for the next video that I'll be posting really, really soon so that as a second part you can continue watching that. For the moment, I hope you enjoy the books that I recommended to you and a little bit of what I told you about my personal practice, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.